This is Plane Maker Tutorial 25 and Blender Part 11, and we're trying to skin this bottom part here of the cockpit object. Now it's not as easy as it seems. If you try just creating faces across these vertices here, you start running into a sagging problem, and it becomes more evident once you finish the rest of the model. So we're going to have to explore a technique that I don't know if it's going to work, but I'm going to try it. First I'm going to select this ring, and then I'm going to select this last ring here, and I'm going to split them off the rest of the plane. So I'll hit P, and I'll create a separate object out of them. So now notice if I move this around, there's a, those two rings are a separate object. And now I'm going to go into edit mode, and with all of them selected, I'm going to hit F, and I'm going to say make faces, skin faces, slash edge loops. It's going to basically take all of these and extrude them and attach them to the front one here. See, we need to have a little bit more resolution at least to get this curvature happening. But never fear, there's a loop cut feature that could help us out here. So I hit the K key, and with all the vertices selected, I select loop cut. And then once we have it clicked once, we can move this line around and then click a second time to confirm its position. I think we need to place one pretty much here at the edge of the cockpit. I'm going to make another one and place it right around here. And I'm going to make another one, place it here. And I think I need another one up here. And if you look at the bottom here, you can tell how far, what a fraction is that you're actually close to one edge or the other. Okay, so I think I'm going to go pretty much in half. And you can also snap that by hitting the control key. So I'm going to leave it at zero. Okay, now I'm in a position to be able to at least match the uh, rings alongside view. And maybe I'm going to have to match the contour a little along the top part of this plane here as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to snap the cursor to this ring, select the ring, and then I'm going to zoom in a little bit and pull the ring out. And you notice how it brought us up here closer to the roof. I'm actually going to bring it all the way up by hitting resize and then Z just to pull it all the way to the roof there as close as possible because this contour will actually help us meet up with the bottom part of the windshield. We might have to add one more level of resolution here. So I'm going to loop cut again. And the great thing about the loop cut feature is you don't have to have your objects, uh, your vertices selected in order to perform the loop cut. I'm going to move the cursor over here. Select it again. Move it out just a tad. And I'm pretty satisfied with that. So before we merge those two together again, I want to try to eliminate everything that's going to end up being a redundant circle. So I'm actually going to delete this ring here. And I'm going to move this one back a little bit. And then I'm going to hit B twice, delete some of these vertices up here. Notice when you delete vertices, sometimes you cut away more than you actually anticipated. So use this feature with care. Okay, and now I feel pretty confident that if we join these two meshes together, I'll be able to uh, merge the vertices where they need to be merged and make it all smooth. Let's see how this looks. Hmm, so far not too bad. I'm not getting that dip here that I was getting before when I was trying other techniques. So that's already doing what it's supposed to be doing. Merging is accomplished by clicking one active object and then shift clicking a second object and you always see that the second object you select is a little bit lighter pink than the first object you selected and that determines the order as to which object is being appended to which other object. So then I hit control J to join selected meshes and now I have to go through the process again to eliminate the overlapping vertices. And I also probably have to go in and create some faces. I'm going to merge that one to the windshield. I'm going to create a face here. Merge this one to the windshield. And in some of these instances I can, for example, choose to uh, subdivide it and then I have a little bit more resolution to work with and then I can delete this one. Actually that turned out pretty nice. Okay, and I already tried different skinning algorithms to, uh, to join these two guys together. Um, but I think what I'm going to end up doing is just taking this and merging it with, with that one because I don't really need this resolution here. It's just sort of a, an accommodation for what we have going on with the windshield. So see what I'm doing? I'm kind of zipping this up. And zipping it up like this also ensures that we aren't using unnecessary vertices and uh, causing a frame rate hit later on in the simulator. What I can point out to you at this point is I can triangulate everything and this gives me an idea of how it's going to actually be displayed in the sim. 
and this is what the what the uh, export script will do to your mesh. But for clarity's sake, I would say keep it in quads as long as you can because that's easier to work with. You have less faces and edges to deal with. And here's another example of one of those quads that has a concave shape. So let me triangulate this one as well. And that'll just help smooth things out a little bit. See, I see a little bit of lumpiness here. It might just be a result of the way that the windshield was modeled and we can make decisions on how to smooth that out a little later. These are all the decisions that will make your plane either great or not so great. And then you can use different views to sort of take an educated guess as to where the problems lie. For example, here I can see that there's two vertices that are way out of whack with the way their body radius is going. And there's where I would assume that there's something wrong with the way the three view uh, was, was drawn and I will manually compensate for that by going like this. And after I've fixed all that, let's see how that looks now. Well, that looks a lot better. It looks very smooth now. So now all we have to do is we have to create the rest of this nose profile here. We still have a little bit of time in this tutorial, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to select this uh, ring here. I'm going to extrude it all the way to the tip of the nose. And once it's there, I want to make sure that it's going to merge at the right position at this 3D cursor. Let me check from the front view to make sure that the cursor is actually in the middle, that it's not offset somewhere to the side. Just to be safe, in case it's offset like this to the side, we can't merge the nose parts together. So we have to Shift S, snap the cursor to the selection in object mode. And then we can tab into edit mode, go back to side view, and now we can place the cursor in side view, and we're guaranteed that it's going to all merge in the middle of the cursor provided we have this uh, thing selected to merge to 3D cursor. Now we can hit Alt-N to merge at cursor, and now we have the tip of the plane. Now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to Shift-Alt-Right-Click on this ring so that I have the entire nose cone selected. I'm going to subdivide this nose cone by hitting the K key and then selecting Knife Multicut from this list. And I'm going to cut it into six different uh, slices. And all I do now is I can pull the knife across these edges and left click to confirm and hit enter to make the cuts. And now I have this thing nice and subdivided. And these rings can now be adapted to the contour of the side view image. And before I do that, let me make you aware of what can happen here. Right now I'm in the 3D cursor pivot mode. And what that does to me is it pulls and pushes out that ring along the resize radius of that. 3D cursor. I cannot do that, but I can't do this either. I can't go to median point and expect to be able to resize it and have everything be fine because look what happens here. The resize around the object center will cause problems with the mirroring. So we're going to have to go through a little bit of a more cumbersome method here. And for each of these rings, we're going to have to use a 3D cursor method of resizing and we're going to place the 3D cursor along this uh, line, vertically speaking, in order to make the resize that we need to make. And we'll probably need to make a resize and then a reposition along the vertical axis as well. And then we have to move the cursor onto the next ring, position it about there, and resize this ring, and then reposition the cursor again here. Select this ring, resize it, and then move on to the next ring, And I would probably do one more subdivision here with a knife feature. I'll use the midpoints. And then this ring can be resized a little more too. So this is the nose object so far, not too shabby. I can see a couple of, of uh, indents here that might have to be addressed. But I think that's just a matter of tweaking them and then we can get those out of the way. Now we have the choice, we could either move on and create the rest of the fuselage by just extruding these guys and actually what I would probably do here is make the each window segment separately and copy and paste them along the line here because that allows me to do highly detailed window holes and that requires some modeling. But what I want to do instead is I actually want to start working on the interior of the cockpit using this exterior mesh as a reference to how the cockpit will be positioned and how much space we have and where the panels go and all those kinds of things. 
So that's what I'm going to tackle in my next tutorial. We'll get back into the cockpit interior part. And the goal is still to build a 3D cockpit for the existing Embraer that we've made in Plane Maker. So thanks for watching.